Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. And let's jump right into it. I'm going to give you as many reasons I can to trust the pump, to respect the pump, as they say in cryptocurrency land. Additionally, we're going to talk about two potentially incredible op you know, buying opportunities uh, actually, three. Link, Matic, and um, Compound. So let's jump in the charts. What are we looking at right here? Well, this is B Bitcoin on the weekly time frame, which you can see uh, did post a rather healthy green closure on the weekly time frame. So what does this mean? Every candle represents one week of price action. The higher the time frame, the stronger the signal. And that is pretty much um, a candle that would represent immediate continuation. So what have we seen today? Bitcoin up 3.4% already on the day. And um, point for the bulls there. Additionally, the MACD histogram, not only did the MACD cross to the upside in the, I don't know, in the bullish zone or above the midline, whatever you want to call that thing. It's also flipped green on the histogram. Uh, the monthly, additionally, if we're looking at um, if we're looking at BLX, I got to bring that down. I got to bring that down. And we're also going to take a look at the bear. Uh, you know what are what could potentially the bears do? And uh, the monthly flipped green back here. We said. When this crossed up, this was a very bullish, bullish, bullish signal. Uh, another point for the bulls here is the accumulation distribution indicator has flipped positive after being negative. Again, a very, very bullish thing. Accumulation distribution indicator uh, has a positive slope. As long as it has a positive slope, I will remain with that bullish bias. Uh, getting back to our other chart, let's see. Well, while we're here, did I want to cover anything else on this chart? No. So I will put back on Binance. Um, Binance, perpetual futures. Again, I've been really loving this chart because this is where the most volume is traded for Bitcoin. And Bitcoin did just tag 31,300. Um, potentially, that's where I was looking for a bit of a pullback. And um, if you use this on the 15 minute time frame, so it probably has a little bit more to go. Uh, 31.4, um, 314 would be the shorter term time frame target if we don't pull back right here. Um, additionally, taking out this wick, you know, after a big scam wick, thank you. Thank, we should all be thanking Cointelegraph for sending Bitcoin to the moon with their fake news, the fake news media. Um, what else do I want to be keeping an eye on before we get into some other coins? And again, higher term time frames, all looking good. Four hour is going to remain crossed up as long as we're above 30,598. Volatility is still increasing. Um, as you see the four hour uh, moving average on the BBWP, the Bollinger Band with percentile, as that starts to curve back over, you could be looking for that short term correction um, before we head a bit higher. But the daily. And we said, don't fight that daily downtrend. Don't fight the daily downtrend. And as long as these higher lows are in place, well, we've got an uptrend on the daily. Do we have it on the weekly? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Why is that? Well, here was the first higher low and higher high. Higher low, higher high, higher low. Higher high, and some would debate whether or not this is a higher low or not. And it depends on what exchange you are using 
for instance, BitGet, which I don't don't love them at the moment. Um, the other one I want to look at, Coinbase. Coinbase, I think, is the most relevant. Why? Well, we're the United States. A lot of trading volume, a lot of spot buyers, I would say, out here in the U.S. And spot buying is, um, oh, we're coming in right into this box. So let's see if we get that run up to 32.8. Um, maybe the top side of this box, any kind of a daily closure back up there is going to look very, very good for some continuations. <sighs> there will be a pullback at some point. Um, let's see if I can find the Coinbase chart. KuCoin. Does it have a higher low? On a wick basis, it does. On a closing basis, I mean, all of them are pretty close. I think, I think, um, see, look, that wick is lower than that wick. So anyways, close enough is close enough. I would consider this still in a weekly uptrend, a daily uptrend, which is in general going to be macro bullish. Additionally, the monthly time frame, just by taking out this wick, is going to look good for, uh, well, monthly continuations and pretty much, you know, you could call that the first higher low, but um, I actually, I, yeah, I wouldn't call that a higher low, but this will definitely be confirmed in the next eight days and six hours in my book, as long as we're above 27,590, which is going to look very, very good for some upside continuation going into uh, next month. And where the bull traps and the bear traps tend to come in. Well, um, that's going to be this region right here. Th kind of 38 to uh, 45,000, somewhere in that zone. Somewhere in that zone to give you an idea. Where are we at in the picture of things? Well, that would be 25% uh, higher. If we hit the not 0.5, that is the 50% retracement. And the famous 618 is coming in at 41% uh, higher than we're at today. Notice volatility is still declining. And if this does begin to tick up, right now we could be having a mean reversion bounce before all hell breaks loose. Before World War III and the stock market goes down, 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 down to doggy town. Uh, that's kind of the only... Um, the only thing that still has me potentially questioning the validity of the rally, are they sucking in the bulls just to smash down <laughs> for the bears to win ultimately? And after the five day uh, gets that lift off from a very low level above 25%, we never quite made it above 25%, the five day volatility expansion you know, can get you, I mean, from the lowest levels ever, as we're consolidating for a very long period of time. Is this the Coinbase chart? There it is, Coinbase spot. And that's what I was talking about. Coinbase, which by the way, if you want to uh, figure out, you know, some of the things I'm discussing here, higher lows and higher highs and all this stuff right here, I made a short tutorial video. It is posted in, I believe, our home channel. Uh, if you want to get that video on how to identify trends, well, just shoot me a DM, post a comment below. I'm happy to send that out to you. But uh, here's the thing to consider with Coinbase and its weekly higher lows and higher highs. And where's the next higher high come in? Conservative target uh, going to be right there at 33,742. The more aggressive target, which I actually think we're going to hit, uh, is going to be 36,267. The only thing they could send it down, guys, is if the stock market implodes. And what could potentially, um, you know, implode the stock market? Well, Joe Biden could definitely do it.
if, if he wanted to. Um, but right now, weekly volatility is just, just lifting off the lows here. We got good curvature on the stochastic. We also um, rejected the bullish control zone on the first pass, well, on the second pass. And uh, is there potential for hidden bearish divergence? So yes, there is. Yes, there is quite. And this will play out very ra rather swiftly to the downside, I would say, as long as we are below 47.1, 50,000. I, I actually think that's that's where the, the market makers are going to send it, about 50,000 bucks, uh, because that's where everybody's stop losses are, if you're a macro kind of trader here. If you're a macro weekly time frame trader, and what is that also going to be in line with? Well, what do you know? The 618. I'm calling it Bitcoin to 49,000. Bitcoin to 49,000. If volatility gets above 25%. If you see that in line with these stochastics pointed to the upside, the monthly stokes, where are they at? They're healthy healthy, healthy, healthy to the upside. The bi-monthly stokes just crossed up as well. The three-month stokes are going to cross up how many months? How many months till the three months? Are we in the fourth quarter? Yes, we are. So those will have the chance to cross up at the end of the year. I got to bring this down. Oh, Mr. Bot has turned on <sighs> Jerome bot. Yep. That's what I named him after my grandfather's hometown city of Jerome. Um, long story short, that's where the name came from. All right. Uh, this is the one I want to bring to the bottom of my list. It's the longest price history for Bitcoin. I don't necessarily love it because it's about 24 hours behind, but when you're looking at a macro time schedule, I think it comes in very handy. I don't, I don't know of anything else that does go back that far. So I'll put them in my most important things, which are at the bottom of the list here. Uh, NASDAQ, S&P, Dixie, Bitcoin dominance, uh, BLX, the most well, Bitcoin dominance is still at the top. I got to make a new list. I got too many coins on this list. So again, as many points as I could make for Bitcoin rallying to the moon. Um, you will see, yeah, these are going to cross up as long as Bitcoin's above 30,000 bucks and just, or sorry, 25,000 by the end of the year. So yeah, a lot can happen between now and then. But uh, this is the general zone we've been looking to target up there around 42 to 32,000. Anything else I can say that uh, would remain with the bullish posture on the daily? And do we want to talk about where potentially the liquidity is? So this is high block capital, the one year liquidations. You can see start at 32.4. I don't think it's going to stop there, guys. I, I, the way we just blew through uh, these, and well, we didn't blow through it, but we tagged these liquidations at 30,900, came back, filled the wick strong, and we're continuing with that upside posturing um, on the daily time frame. The daily momentum will remain the upside as long as Bitcoin's above 28. 581. Notice that number will increase as the Stokes continue. And we will have some bearish divergence that will play out. <clears throat> if we cannot clear this high right here. And uh, well, more importantly, this guy right here, this is going to be a critical level coming in here at 32.5, 32.5. Line that up with the heat map. $32,500, 
32.4, 32.5, right in this zone. Um, after this long consolidation up here, I mean, how long have we been sitting at 25 to 30,000? It seems like an eternity, but let's just use the ruler to find out. So 20% range for the last, how many days? Wow. 191 days, 191 days. So six months from April to October. And the result of the break of this range, right? The result of the break of the range sends us up to 36,258. And that's where I would expect the short term pullback to come in. But first things first, need a daily closure back above this level. This is the line in the sand. The line in the sand, 32,4, call it 32,5. Daily closure above there, I would not be surprised for the next target to get hit at 36,252. And in more volatile markets, the uh, 2618 coming into play. What could potentially change my bullish bias? Well, <clears throat> in the short term, actually, I think we could come down, as I noted in the beginning of the video, when Four hour stokes cross back down. Alongside volatility uh, beginning to wane, that would be the first short term or medium term pullback, I would say. Medium term pullbacks are fine. And as long as we hold that daily uptrend, things are in place for continuations to the upside. So I guess the next thing I will bring up, I'm going to bring all this down and make a new chart. I'm going to make a new hot list, but uh, tether dominance. Ooh, we, we definitely want to see this break down. And maybe I should have drawn this a little better. So this is an area where potentially, you know, a bounce on the tether dominance could happen, which means, you know, short term pullback for Bitcoin. Um, something to keep our eyes on as well. When people are selling their tethers, they're buying cryptos. When they're buying their tethers, they're selling cryptos. Okay, I think I've said enough on Bitcoin for today. Maybe tomorrow, touch on some Ethereum's because Ethereum is waking up as well. Uh, and that was my next point here. The ETH Bitcoin chart. Now everything's getting scattered all over the place. ETH Bitcoin. So this is Ethereum priced in Bitcoin. I'm just going to move it all down. I'm going to move it all down. And then it will be a nice cluster at the bottom of the page here. And one more. One more. Okay. Okay. I guess we got to do it all. So Ethereum price in Bitcoin, we talked about that falling wedge, hitting the downside. And when we saw the bottom of the target get hit, potentially that was the area of interest to start taking a nibble at some altcoins. You don't have to front run it. You don't have to go early. Frankly, you just have to get the timing right. So now all my favorites are right here. And the one I wanted to bring our attention to was this one on the daily time frame. And we did say, look, potentially when we tagged this area that it would bounce and provide some room for some altcoins to party. Altcoins that are partying right now. Bitcoin Satoshi's vision. I'll give you my two cents on that uh, alongside of Bitcoin Cash. Also having a bit of a party. Why is that? Well, there's this rumor that uh, BlackRock owns all the mining companies. And 
essentially, if you own the mining companies, you might be able to control Bitcoin. And that that might not be for good for Bitcoin long term. I don't know if this is verified or variable, uh, very variable or verified, but if BlackRock owns all of the mining companies, uh, probably not the best thing for Bitcoin. Um, although I don't think Bitcoin can be stopped. And I'm sure there's a million guys like Michael Saylor who've thought about this, analyzed it and said, look, it's not going to stop Bitcoin, at least for this bull run. And the bull run likely, in my opinion, takes Bitcoin up to 180 to 250,000. I believe we are in what would it be the fourth bull run for Bitcoin? What am I talking about? Here's what I'm talking about, guys. The all-time history of Bitcoin. So bull run one, two, three. This will be the fifth one. Unless you count this first one from 2009 to 13. Notice how they have similar distances. 2015 to 2017. 2018 to 2021. This one you could say went all the way, yeah, to 2021. And so, again, you know, outlining the having theory. If you guys have been watching my channel, if you've talked to me in person, if you've had any kind of a Zoom call with me and we discussed this, this has been the plan. It's playing out perfectly. We held the lows. We come up, tap the box, sell off either before or after. Benjamin Cowan says before. Um, I think right around having date, probably going to be a good time um, to take some profit. But needless to say, pull back. And then next year, Bitcoin has the uh, parabolic blow off top that it always does have from the ultimate high to the ultimate low. You would take a Fibonacci retracement tool. And uh, you can see in pa past prior bull markets every single time, We've come up to the, uh, the 3618 to the 236, uh, 4236. That is where your parabolic blow off tops happen. And that's right in line. Um, I'm saying conservatively, you know, conservatively, depending on if you use the Wix, how close, how exact you want to get here. But uh, the 2618 would be uh, 155,000. Yeah, so that's just just an idea for where we can potentially be looking for highs. But if you want to know the one indicator that has never failed in calling the macro top in Bitcoin that we use, shoot me a DM or post a comment below and I will fill you in. All right, let's check in on some of those alternate coins that we were talking about in the beginning really quick as I've gone on long enough about Bitcoin. It is Monday. It's a little extended Monday. Everybody was sleepy. Everybody sleeps in on Monday. After a long weekend, I played some golf. I went surfing. Enjoyed that. Dude, I was sitting on the beach yesterday. It was probably like 75 80 degrees in malibu and i couldn't even believe i was like it's october how many more of these days are we going to get because i know it's going to get cold here again you can feel it in the early morning hours you know it's colder than it has been um but essentially ooh, look at that and i don't know how price just tends to gravitate I want to see the link Bitcoin chart right up to that purple 200. That was my target over the weekend. And uh, now getting a short term pullback from 11 bucks, $11. But essentially, uh, back on a Bitcoin, you know, it looks like they're going to go for that liquidity. Remember, there is some liquidity down here. At the $24,000, $25,000 range, you know, big volatile move, something. So what would invalidate our bullishness essentially would be this. Uh, the dollar, I guess close enough was close enough. We had that target for, I don't know, six months or something. But um, 
I'm still not over it and uh, still not over it. But I, I would suggest this, that um, just because the four day is bleeding out right now and the daily, it looks like we are going to come down to the green 55 and the daily trend is going to reverse. You'll have your first lower low, lower high. Again, why trend confirmation is so important. So um, at least for the medium turn, looks like dollar down and that's good for Bitcoin, good for stocks. Even stocks are going up today for no apparent reason, because we know overall the economy is not doing great. Inflation is still high. Whatever Jerome Powell is doing is not working. <clears throat> and essentially earnings are down. But technical analysis says this, look, uh, Massive ascending triangle. If we can take out, essentially, uh, you know, a daily closure back above this. This I don't. I don't like these. Back back above fifteen seventy six new all time highs. Whenever the stock market comes within five percent of making a new all time high, which it has, it means we're going to make new all time highs within twelve months. We're also going into an election year, and I'd be willing to bet they're going to make the the party continue in the stock market, which is going to be good for Bitcoin. Uh, S&P still uh, kind of hanging on to this downside downside track. Let's see if that Jerome bot did just take a nice profitable trade there. Good job, Mr. Bot. Mr. Bato Rogato. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you. So back on the link and uh, comp and why I'm looking at Ave and why we're talking about chain link. So chain link is positioning themselves as the commander in chief of tokenizing all assets. So stocks, bonds, real estate, they're all going to go on the blockchain. Doesn't mean they're all going on Bitcoin, but they're all going to go on some kind of a digital asset network and Gosh, I could say we've been saying this for a very, very long time. Nobody's probably even here now. If you're listening past this point, I will smash you a like button. I will give you a thumbs up uh, if you've been here this long to hear me rant about uh, crypto. But in general, these things are irritating me. Here we go. Why do I make these videos? You know what? It helps you to speak out uh, what you want to come to pass, right? And uh, if you're looking at this as just a major consolidation from <clears throat> 2022, what is that? May. So year and a half consolidation. And boom, what do we get? Lowest volatility ever and expansion to the upside for Chainlink. For Mr. Chain Link, which did lead the 2018 bull market, or that was the end of the bull market. So 2016 to 2015 bull market. Um, again, chart not looking so pretty. But here's what I, you know, have noticed in my career of trading magic internet monies is that these massive pivots, spike highs, right? Which by the way, as I readjust the, uh, you know, is close enough, close enough? Are we there yet? It seems like we did tag it now. Are we going to blast through it? Are we going to get some selling pressure right here? I think Link has the momentum to hit the 618 here at least coming in at 1364. But just in case, let's see where the big liquidation heat maps are for Mr. Chain Links. And we've blasted through everything, smoked through it. So. Do you want to buy the breakout? Probably not. 
Probably not. Probably want to wait for the higher low that comes back in uh, at that level at about 866. As long as we are up there, I'm going to remain bullish on this one. Also taking a look at the little heat map here on the very, very short term time frames. Uh, you know, I think the the bulls are going to take over right now. The bulls are going to start to run like lightning. Why? Because the retailers yeah. don't care. They're not trading the market. Um, they are just getting bullish now because, well, the time to be bullish was later. And that's neither here nor there. But um, I'm just looking at this from the perspective of a nice Fibonacci retracement. And both that and that also gives me the upside of more bias for Mr. Link. For a little bit higher, because after a year long consolidation, and now these guys are positioned as the most highly esteemed piece of technology for tokenizing real world assets, which is going to be the trend of the future. Everybody knows it. Everybody who's been trading this market for a long time remembers this. Oh, did it pop up there? Let's go link spot on Binance. Forget about Coinbase. Chainlink Tethers, Chainlink USD. That's probably the one to look at. Everybody remembers Link back here. So massive consolidation for, oh, about a year and a half. So similarities here. Volatility low, regains the exponential, and boom. Boom. Bang to the upside. Same thing. Low volatility. Regains the exponential and... I think this was actually a downside move first, and then the upside move came there. But this might not look like a lot for Mr. Chainlink. I don't think this is the oldest chart. Let's let's go to Coin Market Cap and look at Link here as well. What does Chainlink do? They do all kinds of things, um, but the narrative as there being the predominant player in tokenizing real world assets. Don't ask me how they do it. Just trust me that the rumor on the street is this. Yes. So 24 cents up to 48 bucks. Mm, not a bad, uh, not a bad run. Now, Oddly enough, during 2023, uh, it did not lift off like Bitcoin, but now her chance is now to rally to the moon, to party to the moon, and just keep your eye out on Chainlink. Maybe buy one, one Chainlink at $10 right now with the hopes that it heads back up to the uh, all-time high of $50. All right, next one I want to bring to our attention. I'm going to wrap this video up. Ave, Ave similarly on the weekly time frame had this long consolidation down and keep in mind Ave hit a max of 695 in the last run. Six ninety five. When was I feel really silly saying this, but when when was the peak for Bitcoin? <laughs> um, so this was November 2021. I remember that clearly because December I was in Hawaii and um, starting to play the market to the downside. So Link, November 2021, I mean Ave. Never took out its all-time high, so kind of showing a sign of weakness there on Link again. A good indicator why it went down, but Ave, that's what I wanted to see. November 2021, same thing. 
Needless to say, this is a decentralized lending platform where people like Elizabeth Warren should go get a loan to help save herself from stupidity. Uh, but uh, essentially, we are broken out of this descending triangle, and your target is going to be, wow, minimum the 382 coming in at uh, 126, we're at 826. But here's not the play, which I think this is a decent play. And I do think in the new bull market, this one probably makes new all-time highs. One of the great products out there for decentralized lending. They made it through all the crashes, all the crap. But Compound, it's like XRP versus XLM, except for these are actually good products, right? Um, these are actually things that I have personally used and uh, friends of mine have used and they all enjoy and it it's like a bank that you can get a loan from without a bank what do you know don't don't tell anybody else about this okay uh but needless to say we already got the bounce up to the 382 so if Aave's already up 75% off the lows. Here's the theory. This doesn't always work out, guys. <clears throat> We're looking at a weekly time frame, so these can take weeks or months to play out. So up 63% off the low in the last six weeks, which I had an excellent short on compound. So in the last six weeks, well, only up 28%. So I imagine Mr. Compound is going to catch up. Oh, and this is just a breakdown retest. Perfect breakdown retest. Right? Boom. Okay, maybe not a perfect one. Yeah, perfect. So as long as we do not take out these lows at 34.25, you know, you're looking for a deeper drive to the upside. Somewhere in this zone would be my target between the night not the, the not 0.5 and the 618. I do like this one. And I said we would look at Matic. Which Solana Solana broke out pretty huge too. I, I think it's I, I mean if you weren't in on that trade already, you uh pretty much missed it. So we want to go for things that look like they've got potential from these lows. And really, the weekly, if we can just close the week back up above 51.45, I would target a move all the way up to 78 bucks. Um, short term, maybe, maybe, maybe through the end of the year. We're talking about double from where we're at today, by the way, guys. Uh, double time, double, double, double time, and just. Aside the uh, the daily here also, you know, looks like it's picking up. Volatility is just getting above 25%. Going to get a, I think we at least take out the high here. So what would I suspect? Maybe something like this. Pops it up, makes it a low, um, higher high, and then higher low, and then boom. Something like that. So if you miss this move, you know, maybe get in on the next one. Or it could just blast off right to the moon, guys. Um, blasting off right to the moon. If they have one more announcement from the bankers, from from these broken financial systems that, hey, you know, um, the funding program, term funding or whatever, stimulus plan, backdoor stimulus plans they've been doing, quantitative easing without telling anybody, right? They're the term funding program, what the heck is that? That just means they're giving free money to the bank underneath your nose. Compound and Matic, I said. Matic was the last one, guys. And sorry, I haven't been live on any of the um, TikToks or any of that stuff lately. I've just been too swamped. Too swamped to get it done. But uh, Matic also appears to have broken out of a long-term downtrend on the weekly time frame. Depends on how you have it drawn out. I think it looks better on the daily. But uh, 
not 100% sold on this one yet. Well, I am pretty sold on it. It looks like looks like liftoff. And this one has so much popularity, you know, when these little breakouts just start to go, you know, if you're waiting for the retest, why would you wait for the retest when volatility is still expanding on the daily? The 12 hour is maxed up. Okay, that, that might be one reason. And uh, we have ticked below there on the previous low. So does it have a little more to go? I do think so. You can see the stochastic is getting into the critical zone here at 89 bucks. So probably has a little bit more to go on this dramatic, but um, you know, the retest would be waiting to buy back somewhere, you know, along the not uh, 0.5 or the 382. Did it already get a little stutter step retest? You know, you could call that it right there. We broke it, tested, and off to the moon. Off to the moon for Mr. Matic. Um, Ethereum looking strong right now as well. Ethereum about to lift off. Sending it. Are we going to break the high of the day? Let me show you what I'm talking about right now. Since we're here, guys, since you're still here to the end of this video, it's another chart I'm wor working off. Uh, here's a five minute on the left. Here is the, excuse me, the hourly on the right. Stokes are way up there. Going to have some bearish divergence, so probably sells off the high of the day. On the first pass, well, the second pass for today. The high and the low of the day. Uh, but if we do close a daily back above 1700 bucks, uh, I think it's probably going to continue onwards and upwards as it has not gone up as much as Bitcoin. Bitcoin at 31,155, looking nice, looking very, very nice. Chain link up at 1033, compound up at 4531. What is this Kyber? The Kyber popper. I don't know what that is. Rune, twelve percent today. Hit the high of the day. Sold off. Big, big run for uh, this one today. And potentially, in a, you know, don't short this one. I, I've not, not had any success with that personally. Um, Telmo, just curious to see where that's at. All right, I've gone long enough. ACH, another big player hitting the high of the day. So is it time to put your shorts on or buy the breakout? And I'm leaning towards buy the breakout because, well, everything's breaking out and uh, the retailers are going to FOMO in for a couple more days, I would say. FOMO in a couple more days, send it a bit higher, and then we have a little correction and scare everybody one more time, and then it's game on. All right, have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. If you did enjoy the show, make sure you hit the like button and put a thumbs up. Ask any questions you have in the comments below. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Take care.